charges that should never have been brought in the first place. Tort action against the dog owner, dogs running at large, was not, has not yet been started. The Livestock and Poultry Act uh, indicates damages may be paid by the township to the uh, horse, horse owner. Charges under the OSPCA Act against the dog owner for allowing an animal to be placed in danger after the warning by the farmer were not laid. Township bylaw enforcement non-existent against the dog owner. Incompetent investigation with the OPP under the Police Services Act. Malicious prosecution by the Crown Attorney's Office, who should have known better, especially if you're paying them $150,000 a year. I would like to now introduce you to the big, bad, burly, gun-toting, dog-killing, bullet-threatening, property-defending farmer who was so dangerous to a flak-jacketed, 9mm-carrying, pepper-spray, taser-toting, 6-foot, highly trained, hand-to-hand -hand combat OPP constable that the farmer had to be subdued with handcuffs and placed inside her a wire-caged cruiser. I'd like that scary farmer to please come up to the front. Information that came to her in a dream. But you, know. <laughs> you can say it if you want. <laughs> now I'm going to turn this over to, to the panel. I'm going to turn it over to Liz. So I'm going to say again if you're not asking questions, I'm going to come around to your desks and tables and chairs and everything. I'm going to give you a kick. 
This is your great opportunity. Do not pass this up for 10 bucks. Holy crap. Come on. Just give her. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi. I had a major revelation this morning, and it wasn't in the bathroom either. Anyways, I have read the Municipal Act 500 times. And I poured over it and poured over it and poured over it, just like Jim Watson would have as Minister of Municipal and Housing Affairs. So Jim Watson is fully aware of what I had had as a revelation this morning. Right in the Municipal Act, it says, under Section 10, Subsection 2, Subsection 4 of section, Subsection 2, and under Section 11, Subsection 2, Section 4 of Subsection 2, that the municipalities may only write bylaws for what belongs to the municipality. That's right, under the Municipal Act or any other act. This is huge. They are nailing people with property standards bylaws under section 15.1 to 15.8 of the building code. Not anymore, they're not. They are nailing people under the Heritage Act, part four and part five, because, oh, they have an old building. And the municipality has gone forward with their so-called um, heritage conservation districts. They are the parent of the conservation authorities because the conservation authorities are actually creatures of the municipalities because the municipalities can dissolve the conservation authorities. So if the municipalities only have the authority to create bylaws for what belongs to the municipality, then that's all the jurisdiction that the conservation authorities have. This is a huge thing. So when the bylaw inspector comes onto your property and tells you that, oh, you have a pool, you have to open that pool on a specific date and you have to close it on a specific date, according to the building code, you can tell the bylaw inspector, pound salt. Because it is not an asset under those sections of the municipality. And the reason that I brought up Jim Watson is because Jim Watson has decided to pass bylaws for your property within the municipal boundaries of Ottawa. And he has absolutely no right, no title, no interest, and he most certainly doesn't have your property as an asset of the municipality. This has huge ramifications. The Planning Act, official plans, Zoning bylaws. The original Planning Act was created in 1946 so that they could get ready for the hundreds of thousands of veterans that were coming back from World War II. So they had to have schools, they had to have roads, they had to have infrastructure. So that's why the Planning Act was created, but it's all for municipal properties. So you're all kind of thinking, well, they get their authority from the province, don't they? Well, there's this beautiful section in the British North America Act, and it's section 109. Write her down, guys. And it says that the province, and I'm quoting this in my head, has all the lands, mines, minerals, and royalties of the province at the time of union, accepting any trusts or interests not of the province. Your private property are those interests not of the province. And they cannot expand their interests to interfere with your interests. So now you have constitutional law and you have the Municipal Act that very few people read, but it's right there. They cannot plan for it if they don't 
own it. That was my huge, and I'm going to say the words, Terry, that was my huge brain fart this morning. So what actually do these sections say? I won't have my glasses on. Mariah, you're reading. <laughs> See the little arrows. Fill you your gotta, boots. you got to introduce her because she was This is Mariah Soper. She is Terry Green's assistant. Section 10. Section 10, subsection 2, sub 4, subsection 2. That was Can you speak up? Lower by the water. <laughs> section 10, subsection 2, section 4 of subsection 2 reads, public assets of the municipality acquired for the purpose of exercising its authority under this or any other act. Public assets. Further... Um, public assets of the municipality acquired for the purpose of exercising its authority under this or any other act. Guys, there's your property rights. I think I deserve a clap for that. If you are a corporation, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, okay? If you are a corporation. Anything that belongs to you, like real property, is an asset. Um, and it doesn't just deal with cars and trucks, folks. This is parks. These are heritage buildings. This is town halls. This is fire departments. This is schools, and so on and so forth. It has to belong to the municipality to be an asset that has been acquired. Throughout all of these acts, you're going to see statements, acquired. So the municipality has to purchase it from you or it has to enter into an agreement with you that you are fully aware that you are entering into or they have to expropriate it. And that is section six of the Municipal Act is expropriation. If they have not done any of those things, as it states in 1920, Brooks did Lake and Whittle, you may do with your property as you see fit. Now, Jim Watson knows this. If he does not know this, he is incompetent as a past minister, and he is completely incompetent as a mayor. Gee, what else is new? And you have to understand now, the staff is advising the other councillors that means the staff is completely incompetent based on the fact that they have not known, read, and understand this act in its entirety like they are supposed to. So that means that every municipality has been placed in a situation of tort action because of ill advice from staff. Now under the Municipal Councilor's Guide 2010, Municipal councils are to know and understand the Municipal Act and the Planning Act and 78 other pieces of legislation that pertain to their municipalities. That is just the legislation. That does not include regulation policy. It does not include the Constitution. It does not include federal law. They are to know and understand all past bylaws. So in this counselor's guide, it constantly tells them, talk to staff, talk to staff. But there's a disclaimer in the counselor's guide. This is not to say that, you know, this is the only thing you have to do. But municipal counselors are to perform due diligence. But it specifically tells them they must know and understand the municipal act. Now, when there is a piece of legislation that tells you you may write bylaws under this section, 